Welcome to this episode of Action Video Game Talk. I'm your host, Scott Action Jackson. Thanks for joining me today, or tonight, or whenever you're watching or listening to this episode. Once again, there's a long list of news articles to go through, so let's hop right into it. Legendary Pokemon Rayquaza can Mega Evolve in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Pokemon Alpha Sapphire games. The Dragon and Flying type Pokemon, equal to Kyogre and Groudon, was first revealed earlier this month when Mega Evolutions of Gadali, Sharpedo, and Camerup were revealed. It's since been confirmed that Rayquaza will also be able to Mega Evolve in the upcoming 3DS and 2DS releases of Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Mega Rayquaza's skills are sure to wreak havoc on an opponent's strategy with its Delta Stream ability, writes the Pokemon Company. Powerful moves like Rain Dance, Sunny Day, Sandstorm, and Hail will fail in the face of strong winds whipped up by Mega Rayquaza, whilst ability like Drizzle, Drought, Sandstream, and Snow Warning will not even activate. In addition, Moves of a type to which flying type Pokemon are usually weak to will only deal normal damage. So it seems Rayquaza can Mega Evolve in the new Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire game. Because I know most of the Mega Evolutions were in the Pokemon X and Y games, which where they had some legendary Mega Evolutions like Mewtwo. And then they also had the Mega Evolutions of Charizard and geez, they had so many freaking mega evolutions. I mean, every time when I saw or read about a mega evolution, I always wanted to say, Charizard Digivolve 2! Because it's more or less doing some kind of digi evolution. Or at least that's the way it looked like. I wouldn't be surprised if we hear that more Pokemon from that actual era would be able to, to actually mega evolve, like Rayquaza here. But when I had Rayquaza, I always, I think, renamed him Shenron. Because he always reminded me of the dragon from the Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball GT series. Nintendo has revealed three secret Super Smash Bros. fighters. Earthbound's Ness, Star Fox's Falco, and Wario are confirmed unlockables in the upcoming Wii U version of the game. While the reveal was done by Nintendo on the Smash Bros. site, there's not yet any official news of any if there will be any difference from previous versions to the movesets each character will have, nor is there any mention of the process for unlocking them. However, it is likely that they'll be unlocked on Wii U in the same method as the Super Smash Bros. for the 3DS version. Ness returns to continue his streak of Smash Bros. appearances that began with the original Super Smash Bros. on Nintendo 64. Falco first appeared in Melee, and Wario made his entrance into the world of Smash Brothers in Brawl on Wii. The characters will appear on the Wii U version of the game, the release date of which has yet to be announced. However, there is speculation that the game will be coming out sometime this November. So after the Super Smash Brothers game for the 3DS, 2DS came out, they revealed some more fighters that are hidden in the game, which Last time I remember, Nintendo said that the fighters are going to be the same on both systems, the portable system and the Wii U system. But the fighters that we got here are Ness, Falco, Wario. Three? I thought there was four. Anyway. Yeah, these fighters have been revealed as secret characters, which I guess you have to play through the major story modes to unlock. Which you have been able to do before with past Super Smash Bros. games. In the latest episode of Did You Know Gaming, the series looked at the GameCube and its near integration of motion controls. In the video, you'll find out about the use of Dolphin Codename, the frequent appearances of Dolphins in GameCube games, and how Factor 5, the studio behind Rogue Squadron and its sequels, we're working with motion controls on the GameCube long before the release of Lair on PlayStation 3. 
This brings up a very interesting what if, especially involving the GameCube system and motion controls. I mean, you can see where some of the games could have used them, especially like the Star Wars games. Yeah, there's a lot of games that, like I said, they, they could have used the motion control for. I mean, they did have Star Fox on there. Sony is raising the cost of PlayStation Plus subscription in select regions including South Africa, Ukraine, Russia, Turkey, and India. Multiple IGN readers tipped us off to the move, which Sony has since confirmed, citing market conditions while promising current price adjustments are not being planned for PlayStation Plus in the North American region. When asked Sony whether the UK or Europe should expect any changes, we were told customers will be notified of any price adjustments for their subscription services, but there is nothing to announce at this time. Particularly worrying is the fact that South African subscribers were given just 24 hours notice of the change, after which the cost of a three month subscription jumped 51%, with a year long subscription rising 53%. Hopefully more notice will be given should a similar move happen elsewhere. So according to this news article, the PlayStation Plus subscription has been rising up on its fee. But it, so far it's just been in other countries. South Africa, Ukraine, Russia, Turkey, India. So far it hasn't been here, but if it does come here, it shouldn't be too much of a shock. I mean, how long has it been the same price? But then again, it would be nice if Sony actually gave us a warning if this does actually happen. Released nearly 15 years ago on the PlayStation, Strider 2 will be available on the PlayStation Network soon. The game will be compatible on PlayStation 3, PSP, and Vita. Vita capability isn't always guaranteed on these PlayStation classics, so it's nice to learn that the game will be compatible. You can grab Striker 2 on Tuesday, October 7th. Striker 2. Now, I'm guessing this is talking about the original Striker 2, not a Striker remake like we had on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 3. But this is apparently going to be releasing Striker 2 for the PlayStation 3, PSP, and Vita. So it is giving some life with the old PSP system. Now, Capcom has been doing a good job bringing some of these older games to life for new generation players to start playing them. Although, I do wonder what they're going to be doing next. If it's just going to be more Mega Man games or if they're going to try something older like this. The latest Call of Duty game, Advanced Warfare, will launch with 13 maps, according to Sledgehammer co-founder Michael Conray. Players who pony up for the Collector's Edition or purchase a Season Pass will have access to one additional map. He tweeted the info in response to a fan question. 13 maps plus Atlas Gorge via the Collector's Edition or Season Pass at launch. To put that number in perspective, the past two Call of Duty titles shipped with 14 maps, with Ghosts also offering a bonus map at launch. In addition to the news about the game's maps, he revealed that the custom emblem editor is making its way back to the franchise. He offered an image of an Ace of Spades design as an example of what players will be able to create. So Advanced Warfare will be launching with 13 maps. 13 maps for people to use on the multiplayer stuff and people with the collector's editions and season pass will have an additional map. So, eh. Uh, I mean, I, I've been turned off with Call of Duty lately. I mean, most of their stuff has been just rinse, repeat, just like the Madden games. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not looking forward to this. I probably won't, I probably won't be trying this. I, I still had to go back two more Call of Duty games and give it a sh shot because that's usually how often I try the games. I wait a while. I know I did try Ghost lately for the PlayStation 4. It was a good game. It's not something I would be hardcore behind like I am with Destiny. It's October, which makes it the perfect time for more zombies. Telltale has announced that The Walking Dead Season 2 has retail releases for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, and Vita. 
Clementines, Continuing Adventures will be available at retail on October 21st for Xbox One, Xbox 360, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 3. Vita owners will be able to pick up a copy on November 4th. If you're behind and need to start from the beginning on Xbox One or PlayStation 4, Season 1 will be available at retail starting on October 14th. All five episodes plus the 400 Days Bridge episode are included. I say why not? Let's release The Walking Dead Seasons 1 and 2 around the time for Halloween. Sure. I mean, it makes sense we got zombies. October's Halloween. It makes perfect sense. So, why not? I know I tried some of the first season of The Walking Dead game, and I didn't really get that far into it, because it had a bit of a delay as far as the choice making in it. So, eh, I'm a bit skeptical about trying it. I might give it a try, considering that it's coming out on PlayStation 4, so might be in the keyword. Announced with the unassumed name Next Car Game, Flat Out and Ridge Racer Unbound developer Bugbear Entertainment's next game now has a real name, Wreckfest. Along with the announcement of the game, Bugbear also announced the game is currently running comfortably with 18 players, and it's hoping to get that number up to 24 by final release. So the development team behind Flat Out and Reg Racer Unbounded is making a new game which is now being called Wreckfest. Now if this is indeed going to be a demolition game the title does fit it. I know some people were wondering if this was going to be maybe like rebooting the Burnout series but if it is only going to be demolition this makes a bit more sense. But of course so many people do miss the Burnout games, especially the little crash mode that they had where you could just go into oncoming traffic and create a huge crash and build up points and stuff. Which, I think the last game that they had that was maybe the first, either the, the first one on the Xbox 360 or maybe the first and second one. I know that they tried a download game where they had that. Alright, as far as this week's major new releases, we have Skylander Trap Team 4, Nintendo 3DS, the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Wii U, the original Wii, Xbox 360 and Xbox One, Alien Isolation for PC, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360 and Xbox One, NBA 2K15 for PC, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360 and Xbox One, Project Spark for PC and Xbox One, Final Fantasy 13 for PC, Sleeping Dogs the Definitive Edition for PC, Rise Son of Rome for PC, Drive Club for the PlayStation 4, Minecraft PlayStation 4 Edition for PlayStation 4, Dance Central Spotlight for Xbox One, Dead Rising 3 Apocalypse Edition for Xbox One, Rise Son of Rome Legendary Edition for Xbox One, and Forza Motorsport 5 Racing Game of the Year Edition for Xbox One. So that's it as far as this episode of Action Video Game Talk. Once again, thanks for watching along, listening along, however way you're doing it, today or tonight. I'm recording this on Monday, October 6th, and hopefully I'll have it up tonight. If not, I will have this posted Tuesday on the 7th. I will post a link down below for the Facebook page if you want to go check out the Facebook page down there. Go ahead and give us a few likes, follow, give us me. Uh, go ahead and give the show a like, follow the show on Facebook, follow the show here on YouTube. Later on I'll have the separate clips up if you want to check those out which most people usually do, they just check out the clips and maybe if they're lucky they'll check out this full episode. So until next time, bye!